Can we all rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mrs. Fryrick? Here. Mr. Posnow? Here. Mr. Robinson? Here. Mr. Sanders? Here. Mr. Scalette? Here. Mrs. Schrader? Here. Mr. Sears? Here. Mr. Toman? Here. Mr. Watts? Here. Thank you. Uh, remind to please silence your cell phones for the time of the meeting. And this is the first opportunity in the evening for public comment. All comments and questions will be addressed to the President. Board and staff members will not normally respond to comments or questions during the meeting unless recognized by the President for this purpose. Comments will be limited at the discretion of the President to five minutes or less. Do you have any takers? No? Thank you. Uh, we have the minutes of the regular monthly meeting of May 20th. Uh, are there any corrections? Yeah, Take them approved and submitted. Thank you. Mr. Sears. You have before you a consent agenda as usual. And we ask for any input right now if there are changes or recommendations to any of the reports. Otherwise, let me just report that we estimate roughly 95000 in monthly interest for the month just ended. And with that, I can report. I guess I need to say, I need to ask for a, a motion. For a second on the motion, I'll move to accept the treasurer's reports as submitted. Second. Questions, comments? This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear uh, any votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. The board met prior to this meeting in executive session as permitted by Section 707 of the Sunshine Act for the purpose of discussing matters of school safety. No official action was taken. Dr. Thank you. Good evening. Um, it's the graduation. Uh, the weather did not cooperate, and we were forced to go inside. Nonetheless, it was still a, uh, a stellar uh, performance by the student speakers. Did a nice job. Uh, expressed some opinions that were interesting. Um, and uh, But that's what education is all about, is hearing different viewpoints. Um, Along those lines, the seniors, uh, every year, uh, the high school administration uh, compiles some information about where seniors are anticipated to go and what schools are anticipated in attending. We have 68% of our students, uh, our graduates, going on to four-year colleges, 18% going to two-year college, 10% of them are going into the workforce, 3% <coughs> are going into the military, and 1% are going, uh, continuing their education in some kind of like non-traditional kind of way. I have a, a, a table on the superintendent's report that delineates a 10-year history of the numbers are fairly consistent over that 10-year period. On page two of the superintendent report is a listing of the colleges that are and, and workplaces that our students are uh, heading. Uh, you can see there's a, a, a quite a wide array of schools our students are attending and the number of students who are attending those schools. Uh, as you might suspect, uh, your college has a fairly high number of students attending, 13, uh, but there's students attending college all over uh, the United States, uh, even some places as somewhat exotic as uh, Wyoming. Uh, isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Furman. Um, also would like to note that the 2019 Teacher Impact Award recipient is one of our, one of our very own teachers. Uh, Lexi Morrow at uh, Valley View. Um, the award is given one teacher per county, and the Rotary District that we live in uh, is um, comprises York, Adams, Cumberland, Perry, Dauphin, Lebanon, and Lancaster counties. And Lexi Morrow was chosen for that honor. And there's a video posted by WITF uh, where Lexi is on on camera and talking about uh, what she does in the classroom and the kinds of things that she does. And the Teacher Impact Awards will be broadcast on WITF on June 20th at 8 p.m. If you're unable to see that, they say that they're going to have that broadcast 
available for viewing on WITF website starting on the 21st. So congratulations to Lexi for a job well done and for the recognition that's well deserved. Uh, and speaking of well deserved recognitions, the boys volleyball team uh, went to the state finals uh, <coughs> up in, up in uh, Penn State. I said Hershey in the report, it's Penn State. I don't know why I said Hershey. Uh, but it was up at Penn State. Uh, they they dropped the first two of five, came back, won the second two, uh, the third and the fourth match, and then took the final match down to the last two points and eventually succumbed to a team that really made no mistakes. Uh, it, watching them play, watching <coughs> both of them play was exciting, and it really came down to which team didn't make any mistakes, and which is typical in a championship like that. Um, so congratulations to the boys' volleyball team. They made us very proud uh, with their efforts. Um, on a different note, facilities update. Uh, at the June 10th uh, meeting of the Finance Committee, uh, Gilbert Architects outlined the physical changes and the finances that would be necessary to um, in implement the conceptual framework that the administration has come, with, come up with about great reconfigurations. All of that information is posted on the facilities page, uh, which is easy to get to by going to www.ysd.org slash facilities, or just go to the drop-down menu for the buildings and you'll see it there too. So there's plenty of ways to get to it. Um, and second last thing I have tonight is a leadership training. The administrative team uh, traveled to Ligonier last week to visit Fort Ligonier and learn about uh, leadership's uh, failures and successes uh, of the uh, officers that were in charge out in Fort Ligonier during the French and Indian War, which, um, you know, as, as a history major myself, I really didn't know much about the French and Indian War and didn't realize so recently that that was actually the first world war because uh, it involved countries all over the world and, and battles all over the world. We think of the first world war as the first world war, but this really was a world war that was around the world. And uh, it, it appears that the first shot in the implementation of that war might have started with our very own George Washington um, out in western Pennsylvania in the, in the hinterlands. Uh, so Pennsylvania played a pretty pivotal role in that Seven Years' War, which is everybody else calls it, we call it the French and Indian War. Uh, but we did glean a lot of really good leadership lessons from that. and. Uh, the administrative team had opportunities to participate in some activities that um, were very interesting and very uh, thought-provoking. And uh, one of the activities we actually uh, participated in was something that Dr. Krauser uh, actually initiated in his younger days as a, as a wet-behind-the-ears student teacher uh, out in western Pennsylvania. Uh, his, his former cooperating teacher was actually one of the facilitators at, at unbeknownst to us uh, when we arrived. Uh, it doesn't get much more bizarre than that. Uh, and, and when I asked the, the gentleman, uh, you know, what stories you got about Dr. Krause, he said, I don't have any. If I did, I wouldn't tell you anyway. And I said, and he said, yeah, Scott's a, Scott's a, a great guy. I said, well, that's Dr. Krauser to you. He, goes, <laughs> he said, he's still Scott, but <laughs> it doesn't surprise me that he's Dr. Krauser. That, that, that's very true. But we had a, a really good time bonding and learning about each other and learning about leadership lessons, and it was a really worthwhile. And also, the final thing then is the student enrollment report that I attach every time. And before somebody asks, our kindergarten enrollment, incoming kindergarten enrollment, is uh, Valley View 78, uh, York, uh, Yorkshire 92 so far. Um, but please remember, you're welcome. Please remember, don't put any stock in those numbers just yet, because uh, that could change wildly uh, prior to the opening of school. And that concludes the formal part of my report. Uh, for the elementary, we have Dr. Stoltz. Can we back up a minute? There's actually a motion item before that. Graduate the students first. Or? Yes, let's graduate from first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the administration recommends board approval for the class of 2019 graduates. So moved. 
Back then, questions okay. or comments? This can be a short roll call vote. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. I think they'll be happy that's through. <laughs> yeah, they were worried about that, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Mason. Dr. Stoltz. Happy summer, everyone. <laughs> so gone are the days when it used to, used to just be me and Mr. Tim in the buildings in the summer. Um, although Tim and his cleaning crew are very busy, they do do deep cleaning in the summer, cleaning of the carpets, um, re-waxing uh, of, uh, of the floors. Um, and I do think that that deep cleaning is really what keeps Yorkshire a 10-year-old building looking brand new. When I walk people through it, they're surprised at its age. It's just kept in such great shape. So thanks, Barry, for the, the great cleaning that happens. So our building is alive with children, and it's going to be more alive starting tomorrow in our building because we start our uh, the first week of six weeks of our summer library program. Uh, week one's theme is Small Wonders in Nature. It's a bug theme. So it's mainly a drop-in, as I said in my announcement that went out to some of your phones today. You have to bring an adult with you. Um, but it really was great last summer seeing the parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles uh, interacting with the children. They're, they do book selection, but we also have math games out. Uh, the Chromebooks are out that they can do different activities. And then along with each of our six different themes, there are activities that ju the children sh uh, should be doing. We're pairing this year with East York since their uh, library isn't open, but our librarian brought over books um, that uh, intermediate children can also check out. So that will be going on for the next six weeks, so it'll be fun having the, the kids come back in. Uh, they act like we have parted for years. It'll be lots of hugs tomorrow, I'm sure. Um, we also have Bright Horizons has um, not only their um, daycare going on throughout the summer, but they also offer many varieties of summer camps in the summer, mostly for our district children. And parents can choose to have the children there for the full um, summer or for different themes throughout the summer. Uh, they're doing an environmental theme. Um, they're doing culinary arts, something with professional sports and active games. So they have different themes that the parents can choose from as well. And then a hit for many parents, particularly those whose children have not been in a formal preschool setting, uh, Mrs. Kaufman in our building and uh, Michelle Mostert at Valley View offer a summer kindergarten camp. It's just a little mini vision a version of what kindergarten is like for those children to get very acclimated. And then I get inundated with requests from the parents to please have Mrs. Kaufman because she's so fabulous. And then I just have to assure assure them that all of our kindergarten uh, teachers are equally fabulous and they'd be happy with any of the of the uh, teachers that we have. So anyway, uh, the summer is busy. We're working on schedules and cleaning and collaborating with colleagues, And um, but the pace is a little slower and peaceful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. <coughs> From the secondary, we have uh, Dr. Ellis. And I, I talked to Dr. Williams a little bit earlier today just to make sure he didn't steal all my thunder because I want to talk a little more about our senior class. Um, it's been neat to see some of our career goals and some of those orientations come into play um, in terms of our graduating class um, and some other highlights that are there. As we always have had, we have numerous kids going to the outstanding schools. I haven't had time to go down and actually crunch it, but I think we have about 30 students that are going to what U.S. News would call top 100 schools, um, everywhere from the Stanfords to the Penn State, um, Haverford, and schools of that like. Um, we also have a number of students that are taking different paths than we have typically had in the past. There's a lot of credit to the teachers for advertising programs. Um, we have 13 of the students you see in that list are going to specialized institutions um, from a fashion institute in Chicago, one of our students who's very gifted in that area, to three students going to the Jazz, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, which is one of the premier art schools in the entire country. Uh, so it's amazing to have three kids going there. Um, to one I'm most proud of is we have four students for the first time going to Spadis Stevens Trade School um, over in Lancaster, which is a great program. Um, many of the students can go there almost for free and come out making much more money than our college graduates typically do right out of school. So it's neat to see more students pursuing some of those specialized options. And the great thing about that is much of those are based upon organic teacher activities. 
Um, the art teachers reached out and we got a communication to get SCAD to come in. A number of teachers brought in Thaddeus Stevens to speak to students, as well as a, one of our teachers, uh, Corbin Shearer, an applied technology teacher, took students on a field trip there just to expose them to that. So our teachers have been doing a lot as we work building wide to implement more of the career planning and efforts and so forth there. More of our teachers are taking individual efforts to try to build out some of those pieces. Um, another hidden piece that's not within this list, uh, but it was when the list of the graduates that you approved, um, and Mrs. Freyrich's been a huge champion for the York Adams Academy for many, many years. It was great to see. They had helped nine of our students graduate this past year. Um, those are students that struggled in our own program or fell behind on credits. In some cases, they were transfer students to us that were behind on credits. Uh, but they were able to facilitate nine graduates this year, which is the most that I can recall. So it's been great to have that support to help kids get a leg up going into the future. Um, it was interesting to see this year our four-year college acceptance was a little bit lower than it's been in the past, but overall our two plus four year is the same it's always been. But I went back and looked at a number of our, um, our HAC students, the students going to HAC. Um, there were four students that were actually accepted to a four-year college. Um, and I talked to one of them and they just thought it was a financially better decision for themselves to go and begin their career there and then transfer to another institution. There are a couple students actually in the program listing their future destination. They already know exactly what they're doing. They're just looking at college a little bit differently than we have done in the past. So that was neat to see. Um, so those are just a little bit of details of um, some of the senior class. There's additionally one of the students in that group is going to um, be going to an apprenticeship program at Kinsley. He did the pre-apprenticeship program that they started a couple years ago, which basically guaranteed him a job right out of school. Um, ironically, he's a kid who we drug right across the finish line. Um, he actually did not finish on time. He finished a couple days later, uh, but he still finished, which is great um, to get him set up to be able to go on to that next step. So it's neat to see some of these other students having success in the program um, and beyond just the traditional four-year students. At the same time, we still have the, the cream of the crop that are going to a great schools, which we take a lot of pride in. So a little bit more details about our graduating class. Um, if you have any questions about them, certainly love talking about them. Um, I told them, and I was very honest with them when I said it right before graduation. They're one of my favorite classes to have come through this high school. They were just a neat group all around um, in so many ways, from their dedication to each other, how much they cared about each other, <coughs> from the great efforts with Minitan over the four years, um, to the performances on the field, and they always brought a lot of pride to the school. So I was sorry to see them go, but they set a great example for our underclassmen. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate you for uh, the graduation ceremony itself. I thought your speech and I thought uh, the ceremony as a whole really showed suburban and some of the strength uh, well, So congratulations yeah. to you and the district for that. Right. I certainly appreciate you saying that, but I couldn't do it without helps of Barry and his crew. They do a lot of work and so forth to get everything set up, and, and certainly my new assistant, Anna Siegelman, did a tremendous amount of work to help prepare that. So thank you very much for staying. Thank you for this information. This was uh, useful. Great. I have a question as well, in, in addition to also saying that I just, it was a great night. Um, someone from the community asked me, and I did not know, um, the, the speakers I, I thought were awesome. Is there any screening by administration in terms of their speeches? Or is it sky's the limit? How, how does that work? No, there is a process. My, I require them to submit the speeches ahead of time to me to approve them. So I don't judge the content, just I don't judge articles in the Tribune. Right. Or otherwise, as long as it's um, morally appropriate, it can be a different piece of opinion that other people may have. Right. Um, and as long as it's along those guidelines. So they submit it and it's... They submit it ahead of time, as well as they are all expected to identify a faculty mentor and work with that particular person to craft. In addition to Google. Correct. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For those who weren't there, it was really, I thought it was really well done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have before you the business office report, which includes items A through J. Would any board member like any of these items considered separately, or are there any questions on any of these items? Question 
I would ask then that a motion be made to approve the below mentioned items. So moved. Second. I'm assuming we have no questions and comments since we didn't before. So I guess this could be a short roll call vote. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. Under the informational, the Food Service Department report, you have the dining report for May and the sales activity report. Any questions on them? Ms. Mason, I'll just note that your motion was only A through J, pursuant to what's written in there, so K and L were not moved. Oh, I'm sorry. I, yep. I thought that was intentional, but perhaps no, it was, it was not. <laughs> no, it was not. Okay. Let's. We'll finish on the informational. Is there any questions on them? Okay, if not, I'll go back to uh, K and L then. No moved. Second. Questions or comments? One of these is due. Or, um, <coughs> I don't have that yet. When we set the advertisement and the, the dates, I will, I will put them out. This will be a short roll call vote. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. Okay, under discussion, first item is the Gaga Pit at East York Elementary. Um, this is an Eagle Scout project that I'm going to turn over to Dr. Furman. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have been a very fortunate lady this past month of school. I had reached out, well, first of all, in case you are unaware, intermediate age children are gaga for gaga pits. <laughs> and my sister school across town has a pit, and we've been trying to finagle a way to get a, a pit at East Shore. So I reached out to my staff and I said, let's pick a summer play day, and they volunteered over half the staff to come in and help build a pit, but while I have an outstanding staff, we are not engineers or construction people by any shape or stretch of the imagination. So then I reached out to Mr. Klein because I knew that uh, he had successfully led an Eagle Scout project at Yorkshire Elementary School, and I was just hoping that I could get the plan to figure out what to order and buy and start to call in some favors or something. And um, next thing I know, I'm getting an email from Mr. Klein's introducing me to Isaac Heidelball, who for his Eagle Scout project was going to build a Gaga pit at East York Elementary. When he asked how much the, the funding situation and if the PTO would be able to make a donation, happy to report that my revitalized PTO made a hefty donation, so Isaac is going to supervise the building of two Gaga pits in the short So at this point, I'm going to turn over to Isaac to submit the proposal mm -hmm. to you for your review. So here's pictures of the location and what it looks like. Here, I grab tail. You might want to use the microphone. Hello. Hello. I am Isaac. I am a White Scout. I had Boy Scout Troop 20. I am here tonight to propose my Eagle Scout project for the playground at Easter Elementary. I would like to build two Gaga ball pits that are 20 feet wide and octagon in shape. Familiar with Gaga ball. ball, it is similar to dodgeball, but in a confined space. I have distributed pictures of the locations and the Gaga solid structure. The colors of the brackets on one of the pits will be orange and black. The other will be blue for the school colors. And then are the faculty going to be any help? I'm sorry. <laughs> are they going to get in your way? <laughs> are the faculty going to be any help or are they going to get in your way? Uh, they're going to help me 
Dr. Furman has a bill date of July 9th. Well, there is one day that they have to be an all out push. Yes, ma'am. Um, under, Isaac Le under Isaac's leadership, yes. That's terrific. Um, I was going to ask Mr. Garland, do we have any more of the artificial surplus to help with the, as the way you did at your car? We have enough for one set. One so we're trying to come up with some ideas of what we can do with the other one. If we want to put something down at all, yes. Okay, because it is on the macadam, the macadam, so it will make it a little bit easier. Is there any need to dig into the macadam for me to hold the walls in place? I can't remember. Yeah, what we, we will can. have to anchor. anchor. Okay, I couldn't remember what the anchors, of course, if you're sure, which I was going to the building, went into the dirt. So it was either. Okay. Yeah, this will go into the macadam, which is part of the place. I just already met with. Uh, he had a meeting with myself, and then he had a meeting with Mr. Gerling as well, just to make sure the plans were proper before coming to the final. Isaac, are you a student here yeah. at Suburban? What grade are you in? I'm going into uh, my junior year. Your junior year. And, and how long has this process been for you in Scouts? Uh, how long? Uh-huh. Sixth grade. Sixth grade? So at the end of this project, is that when Eagle Scout, you, you get the award of the Eagle Scout? This is part of uh, the Eagle Scout like, process, like the requirements to a project. Okay. Okay. Good. Cool. That's awesome. How many, how many players? Is there a number of who can play Gaga, just as many as can fit into the ball pit? Because mm -hmm. there's one mini thong and there's like... Fifty people. Well, I, 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 I must, I must confess, I'm a little behind the times. I'm not familiar with Gaga. I knew we built one of one of these pits at Yorkshire, but I, I'll have to come and witness a game just to enlighten myself. Maybe we could put the board in as a team building exercise. Yeah. <laughs> I'd pay to see that. <laughs> I play a mean game of dodgeball, so maybe yeah, I think right. that's <laughs> Dr. Stoltz, I'm assuming your, your guy got to hit an overwhelming success. Oh, they love it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, now it's fabulous. Thank you, Isaac. You're welcome. At this time, I wanted to just request and, and give thanks for the board for an opportunity for Isaac to come and speak as his uh, troop leader. I've been in scouting for 10 years. My son, Benjamin, did the Eagle Scout project at Yorkshire to go back to his alumni to go back for Dr. Stoltz and build the Gaga ball pit there last fall. So this is just a great opportunity to continue the Troop 20 legacy and, and getting another Gaga ball pit uh, built for the schools and, and have the boys give back to their schools, which is important. So thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. If you'll excuse us, I think we'll step out now, or we're allowed to go. Uh, you're allowed to go. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Don, are you looking for a motion? How are we proceeding here? Is this tonight? Or? Typically, there's no approval. It's just a matter that it has to be recognized by the board that this is, in fact, being done. Oh, I see. So because it's, it's also part of what they do. Like, they have to have it approved but not a, a, a an official approval because there's paperwork that they have to have documented and signed as well. So for Dr. Furman in East York, she is the beneficiary of this Eagle Scout project. Not only does she have to sign off on approving it and receiving it, Isaac in his presentation to practice his communication skills, part of his communication merit badge, is to then be able to make a presentation to a group overall for that final approval. Excellent. Thank you. Good. This one, man. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Because of the timing to get this done, normally we just do it at facilities committee, but because of the way our schedule has been the last month, it just we worked it into tonight's meeting, Understood. so the whole board got yeah. to yeah. take part in it. And the last discussion item, um, I've asked Mr. Gerling to give a summer project update this evening. Okay, thanks, Mr. Mason. 
Um, of course, summer is a really busy time for a facility, as, as you can tell. Um, just to give you a little update of where we're at, uh, our high school tennis court project, and that's uh, by Kinsley, that project is going to start tomorrow. They started to mobilize last week, but we'll actually see some construction work start tomorrow. The East York and high school flooring projects, um, that was ECI construction. They actually started the day the students were out. Got off to a real good start. All the contractors showed up and uh, really did a great job with the starting off with the demolition. We were ahead of them as far as moving all the furniture out of the classrooms. We got a couple day head start with that. So um, that worked out very well. And the project there is well underway, both at East York and the high school. Um, you can actually see uh, the results of some of the work in some of the classrooms in East York. <laughs> And if you recall, that was to remove the carpet and restore the terrazzo. So obviously we haven't seen a terrazzo for 20 plus years, and this is the first that it has been exposed, and it is in very good condition. And the initial polishing um, really uh, brings out the color, and I think we're really going to like it. So that's going to be a, a big improvement. Um, so that project has started. Uh, again, estimated completion for that project is August 9th substantial completion as well as the tennis court was too. The East York uh, roofing project, they started to mobilize, materials are on site. That work is going to actually start um, today. Um, and that is by debt wireless roofing and supposed to be done again, substantial completion by August 9th as well. The high school gym project, the majority of that work will start this week. There has been some prep work done um, in order for them to start the project, we had to do some repair work on our bleachers to repair <coughs> some wheels and so forth before the floor was started and before the painting was started. That took place last week, so uh, tomorrow the contractors move in and they will start the painting project first of the walls and the ceiling and then move on to the floor. And again, completion date is August 9th, and that is by Miller Flooring. Um, the East York Terrazzo. Um, if you recall, there was a change order from last year for the entranceway um, at the multi-purpose room where we did some carpet uh, with East Coast contracting in lieu of the terrazzo. And with a change order, that, that carpet was removed and the terrazzo has actually been put down. It's not completely ground, but East Coast was very prompt and <coughs> responding. They were there the day after school was, was out to start to demo the carpet and they're moving along nicely with that. So that's that's a good sign. So that will be done well before um, August 9th as well. The Indian Rock Masonry work, we have a bid opening for that. Um, and again, our projection for that completion is August 13th. So we don't know who that contractor will be yet, but we do have a bid opening coming up. And I believe it may be July 9th. That we, we haven't finalized the dates yet. And uh, middle school mechanical, we have two jobs. Uh, Fried Lutz Middle School Mechanical is to replace an uh, air handling unit for one of the rooms, at, a computer room at the middle school. And again, uh, that's been awarded to Fry Lutz. should be done by August 9th. High School uh, Mechanical, Fry Lutz, and that's to replace some grease interceptors at both the high school and one grease interceptor at um, Indy Rock. So uh, they're just waiting on material to arrive. They've mobilized already, so that project will be will be started as well. That's our big projects. We have two other projects that um, the seal coating for uh, the middle school, we just approved that for DE Gemmel. So again, that project will be completed prior to August 9th and uh, installation of some replacement security gates at the high school. Um, that will be done sometime this summer. We don't have a, a date for that yet. Depends on when the equipment will be available. So that's pretty much it as far as the, where the security gates going? <coughs> security gates are going to go in approximately the same location where the other two gates are. We're going to move that slightly to allow better access to the high school office and to the guidance office, okay. which will give us better security after hours. Uh, it'll still give us access to the office and to the guidance office when there's are <laughs> activities, but the rest of the building will be secure. Internal security gate. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, any other questions? Thank you. Good. Thank you. That concludes my report. Mm -hmm.
the absence of Ms. Geyer. Uh -huh. yeah, Ms. Geyer is unable to attend tonight, uh, but uh, we should expect to see her at future summer meetings. She asked if she had to come to them. I said, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on the board, but, you know, we understand you have vacations and whatnot. That, that happens, you know, so, but we should see her later on. Okay. Um, committee reports. The committee meeting schedule is posted online. Mr. Scalette, Communications Committee Report. Yeah, thank you. The activity the Communications Report are provided. Uh, during uh, our last meeting, uh, we continued our ongoing conversation uh, about how to uh, improve communications in our district, both for uh, those who are within the district and taxpayers who do not um, often receive communications about the district. So on that front, uh, the Communications Committee um, uh, came out with a proposal or a rec recommendation to run a spot in the community career to um, offer some uh, information about what uh, the district is doing and also to distribute a postcard mailing uh, to all uh, taxpayers in the district, again, to uh, uh, open a new avenue of communication. And uh, both of these would uh, in, uh, encourage, both of the content of these at some point would encourage taxpayers to go to some social media site, either the uh, suburban website or some York suburban site. And in that way, we could at least have some rough measure of whether this type of communication is um, reaching anyone. Uh, so our thought is to one run one spot in the community courier, one postcard mailing, and then to reassess whether we think this is a, a, a useful device um, and a way of communication to uh, We're uh, always open to uh, suggestions from the community about communication. Uh, uh, I don't know if anyone else from the committee has anything else they'd like to add. Okay, well that uh, concludes uh, my report. Thank you. Mr. Sears. Finance. Well, the Finance Committee met June 10th. In effect, it was a combined finance facilities meeting. Uh, Dr. Williams already gave us <coughs> most of the content. So I'll, I'll give you the, the tangible evidence of that meeting. Gilbert, Gilbert Associates came and they gave us a very comprehensive report on the conceptual framework that was discussed and put together by the administration. And you got the big one. I got the big one because I complained he said about he could, how He said he couldn't see the <laughs> little one. And, and so Mr. Gilbert plopped this down in front of me. This is yours, pal. Well, that's appropriate, um, Mr. Chair. Without, without getting into the details, because I think it really sells the, the work that they've done short and also the work that the administration has done to try to come up with rational responses to these enrollment projections. Nobody has a crystal ball, and that's part of the challenge that we face as a board and as representatives of our community. Our first responsibility is to educate our kids. We need adequate facilities to do that, but we don't have a crystal ball. We see a lot of signs around the district of growth, but whether that materializes or not is, is going to remain to be seen. However, we have to be in a position, and I think these sorts of things put us in a position to first of all say what is the implication of these, of these growth projections and secondly, what are the alternatives that we have to face up to both from a construction standpoint and financial standpoint to meet those needs. Um, I'd like to conclude this report by saying again in, in this session how much I think all of us appreciate <coughs> what's been done and also the willingness of our administration to put this in front of the district as soon as the information is available and as soon as it's in a, a format to be understood by the, by the public. These are very difficult things to get through to folks who have an emotional attachment to a building or a configuration or a bus route or a teacher and there's no better way to, to try to tamp down the emotions than with information. And I think we've, we've been, as a board, uh, very lucky, very fortunate to have comprehensive information from which to make these decisions. Our next meeting will be July the 12th. That will be a combined finance. 10th. 10th? It's the 10th. 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 That will be a combined finance and facilities meeting and of course everybody's invited to that one. Hey, Joel, are you aware of any, any community feedback? Have you been approached or his administration? Is the, is the 
they think the community is getting the word this is a, a topic? Yeah, because yeah. there's some social media buzz. Is there? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, some interesting commentary. Okay. So it, it's, it's out uh, there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's the whole point. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, in terms of <clears throat> formal, we haven't, you haven't had uh, feedback from the community in terms of phone calls or no. any of that, or you? Nothing, yeah, I'm just nothing curious. direct. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah. And that was one of the things that Dr. Uh, Williams and Dr. Trying to pinpoint some dates and forward to actually establish some real community meetings to begin to get their input on these ideas and their suggestions. Because it's time to get them into this process uh, very loud and clear. Thank you. Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Posnow. The minutes of April 17 are provided. Superintendent, you have before you the personnel report, which includes resignations, positions, employment, extracurricular appointments, slash or appointments, granting of tenure, and volunteers. Were any board member like any of these items considered separately, or are there any questions on any of these items? If not, the chair moves approval of the below mentioned item. But I think there's a question. I have a question. Um, and I have discussed this somewhat with, uh, with uh, Dr. Williams. Uh, Stephen Fieldhouse, and I do not know, was one of the people that took over the high school jazz band program. Um, the, the children go down to his place, uh, is my correct, for their practices. They go to their practice here the high school. Dr. Ellis. This past year, 1819, under the agreement that we had with them, yes, the students did go down to um, to their place of business mm -hmm. to, to do this. Uh, Practice. That is not my understanding. Is what's going to happen next year? It is going to be in the correct because we're going to move away from a contract to actually have a <coughs> person hired as a traditional extracurricular advisor. Because my, my concern was, you know, oversight by administration or something like that, as well as any liability that we have insurance by those kids transferring back and forth and things like that. So that okay. Thank you for that clarification for next year. Any other questions? Now the chair moves approval of the long mentioned items. Second. Other questions or comments? Yeah. Uh, well, well, you know, I, yeah, go ahead and do your thing first. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this can be a short roll call vote. This would be considered a unanimous roll call vote right. unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. Dr. Way. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we have with us tonight uh, one of our, one of the people you just appointed tonight, and uh, I'll let uh, Dr. Ellis introduce Addison. It was my pleasure to welcome Addison Godfrey officially to the high school staff. I'm um, very, very excited to have her on board. Um, she comes to us from Penn State, um, as well as with a master's degree. She did a film instruction degree at Penn State following her graduation. Um, a partner, or part of the professional development school that Penn State runs. Um, a little side like that, a few years ago when I was coaching um, lacrosse with a buddy of mine, um, we had some state college players in the, in the team that we were coaching. And at one point we had a PDS candidate from there and I went to dig a little dirt to find out if I could find anything out about him. And they said, anytime you got a chance to hire a PDS person, you could do an outstanding job. So I'm excited to see what Penn State has done in terms of her development. But already she jumped right into discussions about literature and our canon and some of the things that we're discussing. Um, so I think she's going to be a great fit at York Suburban. We're so excited to have her. Um, my only concern is she's going to get so involved in all the different clubs and activities mm -hmm. she's interested in. Um, we've got to make sure we keep her focused just on teaching as well. But she already wants to be involved in THON, our book club, uh, a couple other things, our diversity group, Project Harmony as well, we've talked about. So welcome, Addison. Great to have you on board officially now. We've talked unofficially for the last couple of weeks, and this is a great board to work with. So. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. get my plug in to the personnel committee again. I said the other day at the meeting about how much I miss the, uh, the little biographical information um, that used to be commonplace on our agendas. I just want to go on record as having missed those. And it seems to me if we can do all the steps and salaries and everything of the, uh, of the uh, extracurriculars, we could give the basic biographical information of the professionals. So, just my little two cents. Thank you for your two cents. Any other questions? At this time, I believe I'm making a motion. 
or entertaining a motion. Making a motion. You're making a motion. I would like to make <laughs> I would like to make a motion to approve the Act 93 agreement as negotiated and completed. Motion and second. Questions or comments? Just yeah. Public comment because it wasn't on the agenda. Not on okay. Uh, this is an opportunity for public comment on the approval of the Act 93 agreement. Going once, going twice. Questions from around the table? Uh, let's have a roll call vote. Mrs. Schrader? Yes. Mr. Watts? Yes. Mr. Sanders? Yes. Mrs. Fryrick? Yes. Mr. Toman? Yes. Mr. Posnow? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Scalette? Yes. Mr. Sears? Yes. Thank you. And before concluding my report, I would like to compliment all of those who participated in the Act 93 discussions, negotiations. It was a stellar example of collegiality and cooperation. I thank everybody who participated. That concludes my report. Since you're on a roll, do you want to give us a legislative update? Boy, do I ever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, the hot action up in uh, Harrisburg seems to uh, be grouped around a couple of, of different issues. Um, one being the debate on the expansion of the education <coughs> improvement tax credit, which seems to be making the rounds. In the words of one of our local state senators, it's no big deal because the state already puts too much money toward education anyway. I'm sure there'll be more to follow. Uh, there are also a couple of other items pending in uh, the House and the Senate, all concerned with school safety. Uh, the Senate is pushing a bill for more armed guards in schools. The House is calling for a threat assessment team in every district under H. 1427. And the Senate has its own version with the Safety and Security Committee at PC PCCD in uh, Senate Bill 729. In addition, the governor has appointed a new suicide prevention task force consisting of appointments of the usual suspects. Um, more to follow on that. That concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Ms. Frarick, LIU. Um, no, because last month I reported we had passed our budget, and uh, I'm sure Ms. Mason has got the information on that. Uh, York Adams Academy. Uh, Dr. Ellis put my that report. That's oh, okay. I'm sorry. We don't usually do that, but I should mention our non-grads that we had this year, um, which was very, very exciting. We also have begun digitizing all the records that, since the founding of York Adams Academy in 1990, some over 4,000 records that some of the files are this big and others are this big, so it's got to be digitized. Um, and then we've also in, uh, implemented a student um, information system which will then be linked with the various guidance offices of our, um, uh, of our member districts so that it can help with the registration of getting students started at York Adams Academy. So that's going to be a really big step. And the teachers are using it as well for their uh, scheduling and uh, grades and things like that. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Adams Tax Bureau, Ms. Mason. Uh, on May 24th, we re received a check of $15,566.99 as a refund from the Tax Bureau for our 2018 um, collection period. This was a refund due to um, the collection fees withheld from our distribution exceeded the 2018 expenses for the Tax Bureau. That concludes my report. York County School of Technology. Yes, I had a couple of things I wanted to share with the board. Um, one was the um, the fact that we at uh, the School of <coughs> Technology have had no music program for the last, I don't know, 10 years maybe. Um, that was sort of uh, went by the wayside with re uh, the um, tightness of funds and all in uh, years past, but uh, we've just <laughs> hired a, a a music person, so uh, there are those who are um, glad to see that coming back. Uh, in spite of the fact that there's no music instruction there, they had a very successful musical this spring. Um, in fact, it won, uh, I guess, two awards at the what used to be called the Rosies, where all the county schools come together and 
perform excerpts of their musicals. Uh, I think it's called Encores now, but um, they were very proud of that, and um, so I thought I'd, I'd share that with you. And another important or uh, interesting um, thing that was shared at our last meeting was um, about uh, the non-traditional programs. You may or may not be aware that uh, the School of Technology gets considerable funding from what are called Perkins grants, uh, your federal tax dollars at work. And one of the things that um, measures their success and that money is somewhat hinged on is how they do with non-traditional initiatives, um, programs that are uh, predominantly male programs but have female involvement and and vice versa and um, they have uh, in the last eight years at least doubled enrollment and completion of the various um, non-traditional uh, programs and I, I thought that was good news and especially since it's all of our tax dollars at work wanted to um, to share that with you um, women in the welding program for example men in the um, cosmetology program would be the the flip side of that, but they do make a concerted effort to uh, try to recruit those students because of the, uh, the uh, attachment, the carrots that are attached to it by the uh, federal government. So uh, I, I know that you know this, but I'm an advocate for the School of Technology and uh, you to take a few minutes and read that uh, mini board report that you're sent on a monthly basis because it uh, sings the praises of the School of Technology. So that concludes thank my report. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank everybody that sat through the evening with us tonight. Uh, the board meeting schedule is pu published online here, and this is your last opportunity for public comment. Done? I think we're adjourned. Thank you.